Hello, welcome everybody. It's always difficult to have a uh, speech before lunch, so I appreciate your patience. So distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. At the end of last year, the European institutions were reaching an agreement on the final pieces of the clean energy package looking at 2030. The Commission published its long-term decarbonization strategy for 2050, outlining bold scenarios for decarbonizing all economic activity, eventually leading to a climate-neutral economy. The challenge is massive, but we all, not just governments and stakeholders, but the society as a whole, simply cannot afford not to heed this call. For Greece, a country blessed with abundant resources to produce renewable electricity, some might claim this should be an easy task. The truth, though, is far more complex. For many years, Greece relied heavily on lignite as an indigenous, cheap resource for its electricity generation. The domestic market was heavily monopolistic, as was also the case in the gas market. Since the beginning of the decade, the liberalization of the Greek energy market slowly started to kick off. Our company, Mitilineos, has been on the forefront of these developments, and I can tell you, as have other people on this panel, been a bumpy ride. The Regulatory Energy Authority for Energy, the Lenic Competition Commission, in various DGs in the European Commission, and the Greek state all played their role in this jigsaw puzzle to get to where we are today. And, of course, as always, there are still quite a few steps to be made. However, as acknowledged by the Euro Commission in the, its recent country report, we are in a position to declare that there is a will to move forward and make a much needed leap to catch up with our EU partners. To this end, the Prime Minister recently announced the decision to phase out lignite capacity completely by 2028, a bold objective which has already been incorporated in the National Energy and Climate Plan. As a country, we've also decided to raise the bar of ambition as regards to energy efficiency and the deployment from, to renewable energy sources. As key stakeholders in the region, we are full-heartedly behind this effort, but we must also stress the need to be pragmatic and well-prepared. Huge investment is needed, as previously stated, not just in Greece, but throughout the EU, if we are to reach our climate goals covering all economic activity. The Commission speaks of more than 1 trillion euros per year all the way until 2050, and our own minister has set the figure to 44 billion euros for Greece alone by 2030. A stable environment for investment is, therefore, key in this process. Long-term planning must be facilitated through robust rules and well-designed incentives. Looking only at the end goal also doesn't help, but actually distorts the picture and, in fact, renders the transition less efficient in terms of both costs and resources. We all agree, private and public sector combined, the transition, the transition, sorry, also doesn't help, but actually distorts the picture and in fact renders the transition less efficient in terms of both costs and resources. We all agree that solid fossil fuels are slowly reaching the end of their useful life, but we can't disregard the fact that our society, households, and industry cannot rely solely on renewables, at least in the short term. To this end, I can name only a few of these valuable tools in the transition towards carbon neutrality, cutting edge gas generation, energy efficiency technologies enabling cross-sector integration like co-generation of heat power, the boosting interconnections in both gas and electricity, and optimizing the utilization of existing networks, pipelines, and storage facilities, electromobility in every aspect of transport, and maximizing the use of demand response, not just industry, but also homes through smart solutions. Undoubtedly, Greece will, as always, claim its role in, in this trajectory, aspiring to become the bellwether of the Balkan region, through, though there's quite some distance to cover. 
As you know, coming out of a decade of economic stagnation, the country is now back on its feet and ready to transform its energy markets and pave the way towards the EU climate vision. For traditional energy utilities in Europe, this has been a rough decade. They had to undergo a genuine DNA change, shifting from the old tested models to new market mechanics, driven by new technology and new consumer demands. In Greece, this is happening now. As stated, the public power and gas companies are finally trying to leave their past behind and venture into the new era. In this process, though, it is imperative that we realize that the, fact, the fight against climate change is actually a global fight. And Europe, despite its strong initiative, currently accounts for less than 9% of global emissions. And if the Paris goals are met, by 2030, Europe's share will have shrunk to 6%, whereas if all goes well, for example, China's share might drop to 26% by 2030. In interestingly, I recently learned that between 2011 and 2013, China has used more cement than the USA in all of the 20th century. So just as climate change is global, so too economic activity and therefore competition is global too. When setting goals and trajection, trajectories and when designing policy in Europe, we need to always ensure that our efforts to decarbonize European economy go hand in hand with remaining globally competitive. For this is exactly the notion of sustainable development. Importing everything would simply ensure a fake globalized carbon neutrality and it would also mean that the Europe, European economy would collapse. Balance needs to be struck in this endeavor, and to this end, I would invite our Prime Minister and Minister to further boost productive collaboration, collaboration between state and private stakeholders, energy companies, and consumers. For this is inevitably a joint task. We will either succeed or fail together. In the last elections, a clear majority in Greece demonstrated a very high level of maturity, that they are ready for bold change that includes taking hard decisions. They understood and voiced that stagnation provides no optimism, that the Greek state cannot be a cure for all and cannot survive without private sector involvement and partnership. The current state of affairs in the energy market in Greece clearly reflects this, and the public has reached a level of maturity to embrace these changes. So what we need right now as a country in order to flourish is a new mindset, a mindset that allows private companies to lead in a more promising future. And in Mitilineos, this was not just a slogan over the last few years, but a target we have set, and it seems that we are succeeding. Our recent successful debut bond issuance of 500 million in the debt capital markets price set a coupon of 2.5% in the, was, is only the proof of this success that despite having a Greek zip code, our diverse business profile, synergies, resilience, and historic cash flow generation throughout the Greek crisis resulted in a bond that was not only rated double B minus by Fitch above the Greek sovereign, but was also three times, over three times oversubscribed with an overbook of 1.7 billion euros and with substantial international investor participation. The bond not only reduces our average cost of debt to 2.5%, but a tenor which extends the company's debt maturity. And this confirms our strategic commitment that we have started over the number of years and since the Greek crisis to become more extroverted and expand our international pool and investors in both equity and debt capital markets. A couple of words on Metilineos. We are a major global business organization operating in Greece and internationally active in EPC and construction sectors through Medca, in metallurgy through aluminum of Greece, and in the energy sector, including Porteria. We have a turnover of over $1.8 billion and more than 3,000 employees. The company's strong international presence in all five countries, continents establishes us as a global leader. Our, specifically in our power and gas division, which is the, the purpose of the speech is our decision to dive, invest our strong cash flows into natural gas fire production throughout the Greece crisis is now bearing fruit. 
as we are well placed to benefit from the inevitable structural changes that are happening as we speak within the Greek power market. Our natural gas-fired plants are among the most efficient, while our ability to diversify our gas sourcing needs provide for lower operating cost. We are already the leading independent power producer in Greece and profitable, supplying 10% of the market with over a 30% market share in the gas import market in Greece. We intend to continue the strategy through our decision to start constructing a new 826 megawatt natural gas-fired plant in the fall, which is, as, as we speak, happening and will be online at the end of 2021, that will be among the most efficient in Europe and is now, uh, due to the Greek uh, energy transformation, becoming critical to Greece's transition to cleaner forms of energy. We are also very interested in renewable energy, as, as we all should be, but we also do want to be pragmatic. Greece's transition toward cleaner energy first needs to address its reliance on lignite production, a dirty CO2 emission energy source. In order for this transition to happen smoothly and maintain a secure energy supply, natural gas-fired capacity is the only replacement that can secure this. Dear all, please let me finish my speech with a quote of our CEO, Evangelos Mitilneos, that he made in a recent speech in Washington, D.C., less than a month ago. The challenges and opportunities are already on the table for global and regional markets. The next energy revolution will claim its victors and its victims, and it's here. If this was not the case, it would not be a revolution, but a fragile, provisional compromise for all. However, in Greece, we are on the right sustainable path for both the energy community and our planet. Thank you. Thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, those of you who signed up for lunch, it's on the third floor. On the third floor, those who signed up for lunch, please join us.